We're going to save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. I recognize that he's going to be saving Social Security retirement, but he's not saving Social Security disability insurance, which benefits more than 10 million Americans. So is the president keeping his promise on that program? Um, thank you for that. Yes, um, he absolutely is, and it, here's why. The, the fact that it's called Social Security Disability Insurance, I think is, is well, put it to you this way. Uh, we propose to do parental paid leave in this budget. Again, the first president of either party to do that. We propose to do that using the tools that already exist through the state unemployment insurance. Okay. By the way, I think that's the same way that Canada does it now. There are a couple of states, New York, New Jersey, I think California, who already provide statewide paid parental leave. They do it through their disability insurance programs, their, their, their employment disability. That does not mean that parental leave is unemployment, and it does not mean that parental leave is a disability. It simply means that that program is managed through the infrastructure that already existed at the time it was set up. And the same is true with Social Security Disability. It is a welfare program for the permanent, for the long-term disabled. It is not what most people would consider to be Social Security. So will any of those individuals who presently receive SSDI receive less as a result of this budget? I hope so. I, 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 if there are people who are getting SSDI who should not be getting it, those people who should be getting it, oh, no. they receive less. Oh, no. If people, if people are, are really disabled and there are folks who need this program, listen, that's... So how are you going to better determine who is getting it that shouldn't be getting it? Um, There's so many anti-fraud programs that exist already. Today. Yeah, it's a great question, and I could get down in the weeds, but one of the ones we, we have, one of the proposals we have is actually how we pick the administrative law judges uh, to make, because I think it's a lifetime appointment on day one, and we try and phase them in to make sure they're not... We've been, there's been several judges accused of sort of uh, abusing the, the, the program. But to your point, your point is, is, is an excellent one. We are not kicking anybody off of any program who really needs it. That's not, we have plenty of money in this country to take care of the people who need help. Okay? And we will do that. We don't have enough money to take care of people, everybody who doesn't need help. So what we try and do is look at these programs, again, through the perspective of the people paying for it, and say, well, SNAP, for example. It's like, I know I haven't asked, have been asked a question Americans about it. Benefit from SNAP. 42 million Americans, I, think, I thought it was 44. I'll take your word for it on 42. It is. I think the high uh, was 47, and that was during the recession. Pre-recession, the numbers were as low as 28. It spiked during the recession. Okay, which you would expect on a counter-cyclical program like food stamps. During bad economic times, more people will go on to food stamps. So it's completely within reason to look at that number. It went from 28 million on food stamps before the recession to 47 at the height. It's 44 or 42 today. Yet here we are, eight years removed from the end of the recession. We've had economic growth, albeit slow, where what we consider to be full employment with the, uh, the limitations of U3 and U6. Why is the number still that high? Is it possible, if, if, if you're paying for it, isn't it reasonable for you to at least ask the question, are there people on that program who shouldn't be on there? And shouldn't it be up to the government to make sure we can look folks who are paying the taxes in the eye and say, you know what, we did everything we could to make sure that everybody on SSDI is really disabled. We don't think that's unreasonable. In fact, we think that is the definition of compassionate, a compassion that is balanced between the people who get the benefits and the people who pay them. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.